Somewhere near the farthest corner of Michigan lies Porcupine Mountains Wilderness State Park. Encompassing one of the few mountains in the state, it is its largest state park. On average, this park sees about 600,000 visitors per year and is so big that it actually crosses between two time zones. The park itself is around 92 square miles and contains 30,000 acres of forest. It contains many different lakes, rivers, foot trails, and miles of Lake Superior shoreline. Like many places in Michigan's Upper Peninsula, the area was used for copper mining starting in the mid-1800s. Today you can see the remnants of the industry scattered across the park. The rocks that make these mountains formed about 1 billion years ago in the Mesoproterozoic era as part of the failed mid-continent rift system. There are five main deposits the mountains are made of. In order from oldest to youngest, this starts with the Oak Bluff Formation which is a series of andesite and felsic flows from the rift system. On top of that lies Copper Harbor Conglomerate, which is made of siltstone and sandstone with subordinate beds of conglomerate. This is a mixture of rift lavas and red beds from the continent of Rodinia that washed away into the rift valley by floods and rivers. Interbedded in the Copper Harbor Conglomerate is the Lakeshore Traps, which are mostly flood basalt from another series of rift lava flows. Above the conglomerate is the Nunsuch Formation, made of sandstone, siltstone, and copper-bearing shale. It also contains significant hydrocarbons. The sandstone and siltstone are again pieces of the continent similar to the Copper Harbor conglomerate. However, the organic-rich shale is likely from a shallow saltwater environment from when the area was covered by an estuary. Finally, the youngest exposed rock in the mountains is the Frida Formation, which is made of mostly siltstone and sandstone with some thin shale beds and determined to be from a continental depositional environment. If you're looking to take a trip to one of the best spots in Michigan, here's a few tips to help plan the trip. To enter the park, you will need to either have a Michigan Recreation Passport on your vehicle or purchase a day pass for $10. There are approximately 87 miles of hiking trails in the Porcupine Mountains Wilderness. Here are a few trails that will give you a good idea of what the park has to offer. And along the way, look out for any cool rocks. Up to 25 pounds can be taken with you to remember the trip. Beginning with one of the most popular trails is at the Lake of the Clouds. This is a short 1.8 mile out and back trail rated at an easy difficulty. This area is wheelchair accessible and is the only one according to the park's map. If you're looking to make this hike a bit longer, then continue on to the Escarpment Trail. This is an 8.4 mile out and back trail and is probably the best trail for a good mix of challenge, distance, and views while still giving you plenty of free time in the day for other activities. A trip to the mountains wouldn't be complete without making it to the top. One of the stops you can make is a short walk to the Summit Peak Observation Tower. This trail comes in just under a mile and it will take you to the highest peak in the Porcupine Mountains sitting at 1,952 feet. That's less than 30 feet away from the highest point in Michigan. Along with some of the highest points in the state, the park also sits on the coast of the world's largest freshwater lake. The Lake Superior Trail is 16.3 miles out and back. If you're looking to see a good chunk of the park, the Big Carp and Little Carp Loop is a 27.4 mile trail that will put you right back at your vehicle once you finish. For most hikers, this will be a multi-day trip, so be sure to reserve your camp at one of the many sites along the way. All of these hikes can be made shorter or longer depending on the route you decide to take. Remember to bring a map and maybe check out some of the other trails on your visit. When traveling the park, be prepared for steep slopes, staircases, narrow trails, muddy conditions, and bugs if visiting during the summer months. And check out our storyboard for the Porcupine Mountains. Here you can use the 3D interactive map to help plan your hikes and understand the layout of the park. Nearly all areas of the park are pet friendly as long as they remain on a 6 foot leash. For those who want to stay overnight, there are quite a few options. Union Bay Campground has 100 sites alone. You can also stay at one of the 16 rustic cabins or 67 backcountry campsites within the park. Cabins often require significant lead time when making a reservation as some are reserved a year in advance. To protect the park, dispersed camping is only available in the winter months once the ground is snow covered. But if you're looking for something a bit more modern, you can also seek out private lodging nearby. If hiking isn't your thing, there's tons of other things to do in the park as well. Kayak and canoe rentals are available to those hoping to explore the rivers and coastline. Bike rentals are available as well. You can also visit Union Springs or some of the 90 waterfalls in the area. For skiers and snowboarders, the Porky's Winter Sports Complex is open to the public in the winter months and has a variety of slopes to suit all skill ranges. Cross-country skiing and snowshoeing is also an option. For those visitors, the park hosts special lantern-lit trail events. And speaking of the ski hill, the park puts on a music festival every year at the end of August. 
Stop by the visitor center for park information, fishing licenses, and camping permits. There are also a ton of opportunities to learn more about the area. The visitor center has a large auditorium and exhibit hall where you can learn more about the park. Professional and Terpital Naturalists lead weekly nature-based programming July through September. Schools and non-governmental organizations can apply to the Outdoor Skills Academy where they can bring groups to the park for opportunities to learn outdoor skills and explore. Some of the other activities you might enjoy include hunting, fishing, rock climbing, disc golf, dog sledding, or practicing at the shooting range.